Hello and welcome to the Media Technology Lab here at the University of Sussex. And to kick us off, Dr. Andy Philippides. <laughs> so hi everybody, uh, my name's Andy Philippides, I'm the admissions tutor for informatics. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about our computing and our digital media degrees. Um, before we start, I just want to say a tiny bit about why, you know, why I think uh, you should come to study computing at Sussex. Um, and I think the main thing really is that um, you know, we're, we're a very, re as Diane, I'm sure, said, we're a very research-intensive university. We do a lot of research. We do a lot of industrial consultancy. So I think the things that we're teaching you are things that we're working on right now. So my research is into artificial intelligence. Um, I do a lot of work on that, and I'll be teaching you those sorts of things. Um, the guys in there do a lot of industrial consultancy, making apps, making uh, movies and things, and, and that's the kind of thing they'll be teaching you. Okay, so... These are all the different things you've applied for. So some of you have applied for computer science, computer digital media, computer science and AI, computer for business and management, games and multimedia environments, and computing science with a foundation year. So these are all our degrees. Um, we're going to talk to you about each of them. Just want to emphasize that, firstly, there's now an optional industrial placement year um, between before the final year. Um, uh, where you can go out and you'll work and we'll, we'll help you to find somewhere. I won't say too much about that because David Richards is going to talk a bit about that. The other thing I want to emphasise is that all of these degrees are BCS accredited. So they're all accredited by the British Computing Society. Okay? So they are all computing degrees. Um, they all have various elements which we are bound by the, the tenets of the BCS to teach you and you will come out and you'll all be computing professionals, no matter which flavour of these different things you do. They, they all kind of start at one point, which is computer science, and then go off a little bit and specialise in different areas. But you will all end up doing a lot of programming, you will end up being um, computing professionals, which I hope is, is good news for you. Um, so, what can you expect? I think the main difference um, to maybe the things you've been doing before is well, the main emphasis really is on creating software, software rather than just using software. So um, if you guys want an app to do a particular thing, you will make the app to do the particular thing. Um, equally, if um, computers are getting more user friendly as we've got bits of software that, other, you know, that make it easier to maybe build web pages, um, to do a, build databases and things like that. Now rather than using those bits of, of software, you will be creating those bits of software to allow other people easier access to do things. So I think that's really the emphasis. You will obviously use various software packages, but by the end of the degrees, you, know, you will be doing, you'll be making the things that other people, allow other people to use computers in a better way. Um, I think you can expect friendly and approachable faculty, but really that's kind of what today is about. It's, it's definitely for you to judge whether we are friendly and approachable. You'll meet a variety of the faculty today. You're going to find out in the course samplers a bit about what people teach and why they teach. Um, and get to, to meet them and see if you like the style of thing. If you like the campus, then come here. We definitely don't want you to come here if you don't like it. Um, just, just see what you think and, and see if you're going to like it here. Um, because what we want is bright and motivated students. So we don't specify which A-levels you, you should do. Um, we think that if you're here, you're probably interested in computing. Um, if you're not, 
it's probably a bit of a mistake. So we assume that you're interested in computing, so we don't specify the A-levels. We think if you're bright enough, we can teach you the things that you need to uh, succeed in this field. But we want you to be motivated. So that is, as I said, the point of today. We want you to see us, see what we're like, and you want to come here. So that's why if you do pick us as, as firm choice, that's our kind of uh, indicator that you want to come here, um, we're able to be a bit flexible in terms of the offer requirements um, if things don't entirely go to plan, which they, they can do. So a bit more about practically what you can expect. We have two 12-week teaching terms, and then we've got assessment at the end of each term. Um, and it's a mix of coursework and exams. Typically, there are more exams in the first year, um, fewer in the second year, and then fewer again in the third year, um, and a consequent rise in the amounts of coursework. Generally, kind of programming projects, um, maybe doing bits of uh, reports and things like that. Typically, you will have um, four modules a week, each of which will have one to two hours of lectures, and each of it normally more towards two hours of seminars or lab classes or practicals. You're going to see the computing lab in a bit. That's where we're going to have the course samplers. Um, and that's where you will spend a fair bit of your time in the lab classes. So computing is a practical subject. Um, you have to sit down. You have to do it. So a lot of the, the lab classes, you'll be set uh, exercises to do. You'll be working away on them. And people will be there to help out if you get stuck. So you can sort of work at your own pace. So we've typically got about 15, 16 contact hours a week. So contact hours, direct contact with us. Um, and we would expect, be expecting you to do at least the same on your own in the labs. I mean, you don't have to be on your own. There can be other people around. You don't have to work in isolation, but uh, without us around. So that's kind of typically how it works out. So I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about the individual degrees shortly. But um, what we've done is we've kind of divided the, our degrees up into various different course themes. And so I'm going to talk about each of the themes now. So programming. Programming is obviously at the core um, of all the degrees. Um, we start off teaching in Java because it's a nice mid-level language. Um, it's not too low level, it's not too high level, but you will come across a whole host of languages. Um, you might do a bit of C, you probably do a bit of C sharp. Um, there'll be HTML, Flash, ActionScript, a bit of Haskell, um, SQL, various things. Pretty much, um, yeah, you'll pretty much come into contact with a lot of different languages. And alongside this, we teach a computing foundation. So we've got um, a research group who looks into the foundations of computer science. But essentially, what we want to do with this sort of stream is teach you computer programming in the absence of a computer. So what are the basic elements of a, of a language? What do we need? What are the main structures that are within here? Um, and we think that with this and with a, a practical computing element like, like Java, you will be able to see the sort of commonalities between different languages. The idea is, is that we don't know what is going to be the next big language um, when you guys graduate. right? So we can't teach you that in advance. But pretty much by the end of your first year, and certainly within, by the time you reach your second year, that you finish your second year, we'd expect you just to be able to pick up any language. Okay? I mean, they all share very similar things. And with the foundation, you're able to see the commonalities between them and just pick them up relatively easily. The other major theme you're going to need is, is software engineering. So this is kind of the, the practice of, of computing. So this is how you do computing in business. This is how you work in teams. This is how you write code that other people are going to have to use. Okay? We can all write programs uh, that only I, I write programs that only I can understand. But when you're in business, you have to write programs in big teams that other people are able to add to. Um, and this is the practice of doing this in general. Alongside this, another technical theme is with computer systems. So we're going to teach about the main systems that we've got. We've basically got databases. Uh, we have compilers. Um, we have the different computer architects. So we have how these different things all interact. And this theme, within this theme, you're going to find out about those sorts of things. Finally, we, uh, not finally, we've got professional issues. Um, so professional issues is basically about how you present yourself and how you get a job. And um, we will teach you some bits of this. The next theme is web computing. So this is all about, um, obviously, uh, how we do computing over the web, HTML, various things. But it's also networking. Okay? So networking has become a lot more interesting these days now that everything's wireless. Um, we've all got phones. 
they're all, particularly mine, is constantly dropping in and out of having signal while it's trying to download a web page. Um, how do we ensure those messages have got through? How is, how is the data passed around? Um, how do we get things to interact over networks when devices are constantly logging in and dropping out and things like that? So that's the kind of sort of aim of this theme. And then we get onto the more specialized themes. So there's management, which is, is mainly for the, well, pretty much entirely for the computing and business and management students. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this in a second. Um, we've got uh, intelligent systems, um, which is really about how we make computers intelligent. Um, so artificial intelligence as a, as a general thing. How do we make computers essentially do tasks that we don't want to do? So wade through mountains of data and find patterns in it. Um, go through all your uh, Facebook contacts and pick out the most likely ones to um, uh, sell things to. Um, yeah, basically how we find patterns in data. And then alongside that, we've got um, a more, uh, a less intelligent theme, if you like. So this is robotics and adaptive systems, this is what I teach. Um, and this is really about the idea about artificial life. So whereas artificial intelligence is trying to create something that is intelligent, um, artificial life is trying to make something that's adaptive, so that's lifelike. Um, and um, it's about, yeah, trying to make things that will work in the world on their own, but maybe are not that clever. We'll talk a bit more about that. Then we have graphics and animation, which is pretty much what it says on the tin. Um, and finally, music and audio, you know, how we do sounds and how we generate music and use it. So um, these are the kind of main themes. And what we're now going to do, we're going to talk through some of the main degrees and, and, and how these things break down within the different degrees. Um, I'm going to hand over to Phil now, who's going to talk to you about a computer science degree. And we're going to spend a bit of time on this because com computer science is really at the heart of, of all the degrees. OK, so over to Dr. Phil. Thank Watton. you very much. Hello, everybody. Now, we're going to talk about uh, computer science. And computer science is one of my uh, favorite things. Hold on, will this work? Yeah. So computer science is one of my favourite things. Um, talking is one of my favourite things. And that coupled with the fact that nobody can shut me up means we're going to have a really exciting hour and a half now between us. So that's going to be good. Uh, computer science um, is a very interesting subject because, of course, uh, it found, it, it's the foundation of everything we do. And all our degrees are spawned from this. But if you look at it as a subject, it's very interesting. Because on the one hand, uh, like this hand, for example, is quite man-made. We've made this. See, if you look at chemistry as a science, people for thousands of years have been taking compound A and compound B, mixing them together, setting light to it or drinking it and blowing their heads off. And the problem that we get with computer science is we've only really been able to experiment with this for the last I don't know, few decades, something like that. And it's only been since we can actually make stuff. But actually, the subject itself, the thing that we're doing, we're, the manipulating the data is not man-made. The data itself is an, is an abstraction of real life, and that then lives and breathes on its own, in its own new form, in this now digital world. Um, I like technology. This is my phone. You can probably all see my phone, but uh, you probably can't see it from there. So by the power of extreme cleverness, we should be able to get it on the screen. There we go. And this is my phone. I like my phone. Uh, it's an iPhone 5S, obviously the best phone uh, in the world. We may or may not have a debate about that later. Uh, actually, to be honest, it's the one I own. Um, and normally at this point, we would um, take a little bit of time where I would show you some of the apps I have on the App Store, and then I'd give you a few moments to put your credit card details in and buy it. Uh, but apparently we're running short on time, so it's another five quid I've lost. OK, uh, what I am going to do, just because we can, is I'm going to carry on the presentation from my phone. Look at that. And the interesting thing about my phone is that a couple of years ago, my desktop wasn't this powerful. My desktop didn't even have the number of pixels that I have on the, on the screen of the phone. This, as a science, this as a subject is moving so quickly that we get more advanced in about this time than all the other sciences have done in the, the entire time they've known it. And, of course, don't forget, all the other scientists need computers, which we make. The only thing we're not going to do as computer scientists, of course, is fix our mate's laptop, because computer science really is the... Um, I've got my phone upside down. Let me do it again, then I won't do the presentation the wrong way. Uh, computer science really is the science 
behind computing. And what do I mean by the science? Well, the science is quite interesting because there's all sorts of things that we're going to look at, like new languages. How do we work with the hardware, this wonderful new hardware we've got? New algorithms that we're going to create in the language to process all this data. We are really looking very deep inside this technology and how it can work and how we can use this little bit of quite simple, in effect, man-made processing to do really, really complex and rich things. When you type into Google and you want to find something and it comes back, that is amazing. I know you guys, you just do it. You just do it. But there was a time in the world when you couldn't do that, when Google didn't exist. I can barely remember the time, but apparently it did exist when I didn't have a phone in my pocket that I could just ask for anything and it would tell me. And I think that is amazing. I'm just going to show you a little video uh, of one of our students, Jake. Um, he, for, he was a computer science student for his uh, final year project, he built part of a motion capture suit. Now, the actual suit is fairly easy. In fact, he didn't build the suit himself. What he did was he built the software that enabled the... There's an embedded system attached to his chest, and he built internet... Um, uh, games that run over the internet, but that communicated with these suits. And the thing is with these suits, they generate more data than video generates. Now, you know how bad video is over the internet. Sometimes it looks really nice, and then halfway through, it'll go green and blocky and stop working, and you'll have to reboot the stream. Well, you don't want that in the middle of a game, and certainly not if you know, you're being controlled by your mate. Actually, you're not really controlled, but I think that'd be quite cool. Anyway, um, so that's computer science. And the thing to bear in mind, thanks, one, you can switch the screen back now. The thing to bear in mind with computer science is that... It is the fundamental foundation of all our degrees. And because of that, it means that our students are very successful. Andy's going to talk about that in a minute. But it is a really good foundation for everything. So either whether you do the neat computer science degree or any of the other ones, you're building on this really rich and exciting and moving foundation. Back to Andy. Thank you very much. So um, that's kind of computing, computer science in general. And this is how the themes break down within this particular degree. So we have programming, we have foundations, we have software engineering, um, compilers, computer architectures, and professional issues. So these ones on top, the sort of bigger blocks, are the kind of major themes, right? You're going to get a lot of these things. And on the bottom, um, you have these minor themes that you can have a bit more or less of, OK? So, so that you, can do, you will do some graphics, and you can maybe take a few more options in that. You will do some AI, you do a few options in that, a little bit of robotics, and some web computing. And you can sort of mix and match a little bit within the degree on that. Now, if we compare this to the computer science and artificial intelligence degree, you'll see that um, we've got a bit less of some of the technical stuff. Okay, you are going to do foundations. You're going to learn about the main computing architecture. But you might not go quite as deep into them as some of the computer scientists. But you will do more AI, and you'll do a lot more robotics and adaptive systems. So the flavor of this degree, um, so Sussex has a long history of doing artificial intelligence, um, the, our department particularly. And um, we, have, we have people, we have research groups looking at how uh, we get computers to interpret and understand text. Okay, so to understand natural language. Um, particularly one of the big applications at the moment is advertisers want to know if people are being positive or negative about a particular brand um, on blogs. And they don't want to wade through all that data themselves. So they want to get something that comes in and say, yes, um, this blog is being positive about your new product launch. So that's kind of artificial intelligence, right? It's finding patterns in data, getting things, getting computers to do tasks that we don't particularly want to do ourselves. And because it's such a Sussex strength, it is in within the main computing science degree, but you also do a lot more of it on the AI degree. And then we have the robotic side, which then comes in, which is really core to this thing. So this is what I do. Um, so uh, we've probably got a video of some of our robots running around. And this... So these are some of the robots that we use. So we teach using some of the robots. So what do I mean about something being adaptive? Well, this was, and this is a bit, this was a course I was teaching on Friday. So uh, Davorin, who's one of the student helpers, uh, he was in the class who was building these robots. And we use little Lego robots to teach things. And you can do quite a lot of interesting stuff with them. And the question is, is how intelligent is this robot? It's going to run off the edge quite happily. What's it doing? Okay, so it's reacting seemingly randomly, but
But it has a very lifelike appearance, okay? It doesn't seem to be working like a... Um, ooh, it doesn't like the edges. It seems to be running around kind of like a bug, in a kind of lifelike way. And it's just adapting on its own and doing its own thing. Now the question is, how intelligent is this little robot? What's going on in there? You know, how clever does it have to be to be able to adapt in that way? And the reality is it doesn't have to be very clever. It can be very simple. And the complexity of its behavior emerges from its interaction of a simple rule and a complex world. Um, so these are the type of things that we teach. You get to play around with a bit of robots. But there's a deep message in here. The, the program this is running um, is something called, it's got a subsumption architecture in here. And it's about how different behaviors can fight for control of the robot. It's a very interesting concept. So in this area, we not only look at um, how we can make things lifelike, we also then look back at what that means about our own intelligence, what that means about how we make decisions. OK. So that's the uh, computer science and artificial intelligence. Then we've got computing for business and management. All right, there's a bit less optionality in this one. Uh, the management has become quite a big theme. Also, the web computing has become a very big theme because um, most of computing and business management, most of that stuff is done over the web. So Natasha, who's going to be doing one of the core samplers later, um, she teaches very heavily in this area. If you've got any specific questions, you should take the opportunity to ask her about it. Um, it's very interesting. But it very much it's a computing degree but with an emphasis on business and management. So the management themes, these modules are taught in the School of Business and Management. Some of them are taught by our faculty. And they are the ones that are related to computer science, so e-commerce, e-business, and things like that. But also a bit of the practice of stuff and, and how we can work with computers in a business-oriented manner in the modern world. The idea is that you choose your speciality. The first year is going to give you the foundations. Um, and the first year is pretty common throughout all the degrees. The computer science and AI has got one course that's different, one module that's different, sorry. Um, and this means you can switch your degrees at any point in year one. If I have persuaded you over to computer science and artificial intelligence and you've picked something else, don't worry. Um, you can always change at any point within the first year. Equally, if I've put you off, um, you can switch away from it. Um, so the specialisms are introduced in the second year. About a quarter of the second year is specialised, and then most of the final year is specialised. And as I said, all our degrees are accredited by the BCS. So there are certain things we have to teach you. So there's a breadth there. But we also want you to go deep into a particular area. And we do this in the final year project. Um, so the final year project runs throughout your final year. It accounts for your third year marks and the third of your time. Um, we like to show these uh, because I think they show the breadth of the, what they were doing. So you saw one earlier with Jake. This was one. This is a kind of more AI type one. So this is a game called Cell that was done by Rob Dawson. So this is uh, someone moving their mouse over the screen. And the little dot behind it is following it. And depending on what it goes through, it makes different sounds. So it's a kind of generative music game. You can see the kind of the adaptiveness in there because the, um, the, the cursor's moving in a very kind of lifelike way. We think it's a bit more alive. And he's spent a lot of time, he's got a rich interest in music and making these things uh, all work so that it could be generative and also pretty. Um, it's a very nice project, and you can see that it kind of encapsulates lots of different elements. There was music in there, there was software engineering, there was a lot of graphics, and everything involves the foundations and programming. He put this out on the web uh, for people to use, and it also had some adaptive systems. And it also helps him with getting a job. So we like the third job projects, you know, they, they, often there can be a showcase of your talent for future employers. So you can see how the sort of final year project brings together sort of everything you've done allows you to go deep into something and make something that you're really interested in. Um, and you can do this on anything. So this is just a range of other things that people have done. Um, people, someone did an interactive tax return application for students. Um, another guy was looking at interaction with a robot percussionist. Someone looking at location awareness for Facebook. Um, someone else looking at machine learning language identifiers. Doesn't really matter what this is, but it's basically there's a whole range of things that people can do. You can do anything you want, you specialize into something that you want. You do it one to one with a supervisor. You get a chance to sort of mold the degree into what you really want to do. 
and it helps our students get jobs. Um, and this is kind of a, a range of the jobs they do. Analyst programmer, e-commerce, information architect, management consultant, online marketing analyst, a whole range of things. What's common to all of them, they're all technical jobs. Okay? They all have a technical element to them. Um, and they're all, in a sense, dealing with information. Okay? So that's really what we think computer science is about. It's about information, taking information, data, dealing with it, moving it around and putting it out somewhere else. And um, it, you know, the courses that we have, they seem to be um, very good for getting jobs. So our latest job stats is we've got 95% uh, of our students were in employment or further study six months after graduation, which is, uh, we're, we're very happy with that. Um, and you might say, well, but what sort of jobs are they doing? Well, all of them who were working uh, were in graduate level jobs, okay? Brighton is a great place to uh, find work. There's a lot of creative and digital media. It's, some people call it Silicon Beach. Um, there's a lot of digital media stuff going on, a lot of creative stuff. They're not always so good at the technical end of things. So it ends up there's a lot of jobs around for people who can do more of the technical skills. OK, so um, I've told you a bit about what I think you should do at Sussex. So I'm now going to hand over to David Richards, one of our students who's actually on the placement year at the moment, who's going to tell you a bit about student life at Sussex. Thanks very much. Hi, this is Anne said, my name's David Richards, and I'm here today just to talk a little bit about kind of my experience as a course and take you on a kind of whistle-stop tour of my experience of Sussex so far. Um, so as you've heard, there's a range of different modules and flavours. You can do a vast range of things from the kind of fundamental programmings up to the kind of more specialised things, looking at database systems, looking at more mathematical things, looking at compilers. So you really do get a broad range from the kind of lower level stuff to the high level stuff, and you get a kind of big view of that. Um, so as Anne said, approachable and helpful tutors, so as well as the lectures where you would just have a lecturer kind of talking to you like I am today. There's also a chance to contact them outside, so you have things like office hours, and you can email them as well. So it means that they're still contactable, even though you kind of lose a little bit of that one-on-one -on -one contact you may be used to from school and college and those kind of things. You still get a chance to keep in touch with them and to ask questions and things. So you still do get that connection, which is really important. Um, we also try and get guest lectures as well. Um, based in Brighton, there's a lot of small and large kind of technology and media companies. And we try and get people in from industry and that helps to kind of feed in um, current things and industry things into your teaching as well, which is cool. And it's nice to kind of mix the lectures up and make them a little bit more interesting. Um, so the thing I'm kind of here to plug today is um, placements. So um, I guess a little bit about me first. I'm currently a software developer at a small company called Mobu, which is just down in the centre of town. And we do a secure mobile technology for the police, the MOD and the government. So we develop things which um, track people and secure messaging and that kind of thing. And that's used in the field of the policing and also in kind of military applications as well. And I'm kind of working on a lot of these projects at the moment. And one of the key things of this is because it's such a small company, rather than just having a kind of intern box in the basement, I really am a part of it. I'm up there with the team. I'm working on the current projects. I'm doing the same work as anyone else who works in the company, which is cool. And I'm gaining so much experience and things from that and using both things I've learned and also learning new things which I'll use when I go to do my third year. Awesome. Um, so yeah, say so you're in industry it's between the second and third year, so I've already done two years. I'm now working in industry for a year. Go back and do my final year and look at some of the cool final year projects you saw. Um, and that will gain you BA or mostly BSc, for example, computer science with the industrial placement year. So employers can see you've done that placement year and shows them you've got the experience. And so one of the cool things is salary. Um, I think the average salary is about 17000 which is good. It's nice to get paid for your work. You really do feel like a full-time employee, and you very much are. And also, it kind of helps with your expenses and things like that. So you don't have to worry about those kind of things, which is nice. Um, but the main reason to do this, I can't really stress this enough, employers love experience. One of the key things is um, people always kind of say, oh, I wanted to get a job, but they asked if I had an experience and I didn't. Kind of thing. So being able to get that experience first before you get a job is invaluable. Employers love experience. You go for a job interview. They say, oh, have you done this before? You say, oh, yeah, I worked as a, for a year as a software developer. And, oh, awesome, you've already done this thing. So it's invaluable, and it's just a great CV boost. Um, and there's a range of companies as well, whether you're someone who aspires to work at Microsoft or IBM or some of these huge companies, that's amazing, there's that opportunity, or lots of smaller companies as well, for example, Brandwatch are a small kind of um, social media monitoring, doing the kind of stuff you heard Andy talking about earlier, kind of trying to understand sentiment and things like that and data. Very cool, so you've got a very big range depending on your interests, which is great, and we're in an awesome place for it in Brighton. And so a very, very speedy sort of 
Tours of Rams Live, uh, accommodation you've heard a bit about and you'll see a bit later. Um, there's lots of social opportunities as well, so the kind of worry with the campus uni is you might get kind of caught in the sort of campus bubble if you like. But there is a um, chance to socialise and to hang out with your friends outside of lectures and stuff. And we've got bars and social centres in the union as well. So it's not just all kind of work, work, there's social stuff as well. Uh, plenty of services as well, you've got banks and co-ops and things, so you can access those things without having to go all the way into town, which is nice and convenient. Um, also clubs and societies, so there's lots of interesting ones. If you've got a kind of weird, wacky, or interesting hobby, you can kind of take that and take it here. Uh, I think you saw in the background like the Pirate Society, if you're a budding pirate, any among you, then sign up. Um, lots of opportunities to work for the student union and the campus people and the guys in the green shirts you saw today. So to earn a bit of money while you're on campus as well, which is always helpful. We've also got excellent bus and rail links if you came in bus or rail or no, but super frequent buses and railway and we're about sort of 50 minutes from London or something, so it's great travel. <coughs> um, so there's lots of different things in Brighton as well, so if you venture out of campus, you've got things like the lanes, lots of, sort of small crazy shops, uh, lots of cool places to eat. If you're going to wander around today, check some of those out. And lots of cool like music and events and things. If you kind of Google events in Brighton, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of results and you can go and do that. And I'm just going to leave you to kind of quote, and this kind of feeds into what you've heard about you guys kind of being the cutting edge and looking at all this new technology. So Eric Schmidt of Google says, for most people on earth, the digital revolution hasn't even started yet. Within the next 10 years, all that will change. Let's get the whole world coding. And hand it back over to Andy. Thanks very much. Very good, David. Thank you very much. So yeah. Um, so, that's kind of a bit about some of the degrees. Um, David's talked a little bit about what it is like to uh, be a student here. And I would urge you, you know, we have various of our students around. Um, they're not handpicked by us to be anything special. Do talk to them and find out what they think about it and what they like and what they don't like. Um, and now for the last section of the talk, um, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Dr. Paul Newbury, who's going to talk to you about the computer for digital media and the games and multimedia environments. Thank you, Andy. Hello, uh, I'm Paul Newbury. Yes, and Andy said, as Andy said, about the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you a, a bit of an idea about our two sort of digital media degrees uh, and a bit of an idea about the space that you're sitting in at the moment and why, in particular, you're sitting here. OK, so we have two degrees, uh, computing for digital media, which is a technical digital media production degree, and games and multimedia environments, which pretty much speaks for itself in the title. Uh, game, see what we did there? Very clever. Took a long time to do that. Okay. Uh, okay. They're both three-year BSc honours, like most of our degrees, um, and we're in the computing department. Okay. So we're a department of informatics, but as you probably guessed by now, we are a computing department. We're a very broad computing department, but that's essentially what we do. So, as uh, following the same way we've been doing this so far, I've split this up into a series of icons. Uh, but some of these icons you might not have seen before. So, in particular, we start off with video. So, video is a key part of computing for digital media. It also makes up a part of the game degree as well. Sound and music is obviously very important. You can't produce interactive digital media without sounds. Well, you can, but it's just not as exciting. Um, 3D graphics, well, you will be doing 2D graphics as well, but 3D is where the state of the art is, so understanding about that. Visual effects, this is really uh, only relevant to the computing for digital media degree, but it's a large component. This is a, good, a main reason why a lot of people come to do the computing for digital media degree. It's a technical understanding of visual effects, and visual effects is incredibly important in digital media today, in film production and television production. Programming, that's a core of all of our degrees, as Andy and Phil have said already. And web development, because that's where the end deliverable of a lot of your media is going to be. Artificial intelligence really only applies to the game degree here, but an understanding of artificial intelligence and how you can produce intelligent games is important. And professional issues runs through a stream through all our degrees, because we not only want to teach you the technical aspects, but you have to go out in the real world at the end and actually work. OK, so uh, this splits up very nicely into digital media with an underpinning of computer science. So let's actually have a look at those uh, two degrees. So let's start off with a game degree. So the size of the icons here represent sort of the relative uh, aspects of it. So there's a lot of programming. You cannot produce games or multimedia environments without programming. OK, there's quite a lot of 3D modelling that you'll be doing. Uh, you'll be doing 2D stuff as well, as I say, but 3D modelling is a key part. Not only will you be producing the models, you'll also be animating them, and then finally you'll be actually controlling the models in real time. Uh, to give you an idea of that, we've got a, a clip here. This is from a, a course where you'll do some animation. So you'll animate this lamp. So this involves quite complex rigging and actually getting to animate uh, to a particular script. Thank you. 
Okay, you get the idea. Really. Um, <clears throat> okay, so in addition to that, web. So web development is a key part of, uh, of both of these degrees. Obviously going to be the platform that you're going to be developing for in many cases. A little bit of video in games, so you have an understanding of some of those principles, because video is uh, you often find in games. Obviously, sound and music and understanding of that is important to make your games usable and interesting. AI, to make intelligent games and professional issues. So that's game. Uh, computing for digital media degree uh, has a different set of uh, subjects which are the core to it. So video, there's a lot of video. You spend a lot of time using the cameras, producing video. Some of that video is going to be live, so this is a fully functioning television studio. We have two of these. You'll be producing live television content from a technical aspect. That's what we're interested in, the technical production aspect. You'll be doing 3D modeling, so the same sort of stuff as we saw in the uh, animation just a second ago. But you'll be combining the 3D modeling with the video to produce visual effects. And visual effects are core <coughs> uh, part of this degree. So here's an example of some visual effects. This is a man walking out of a forest into a bunker. So on campus, we do have a bunker, uh, but what we don't have is a forest. So this is the original shot of him walking into uh, one of our buildings on campus. Okay, so what we've had to do here is in post-production, we've had to remove the background, put the forest in. Then there's a series of lighting shades that we need to do before we can have the chap walking into the bunker. And you might say, oh, that's great, that's all very well, but that's, that's the sort of thing that's used in sci-fi and things on television, maybe in films, but is there a big call for that? Well, a huge number of films, pretty much all films, uh, use uh, visual effects nowadays, and it's used significantly in television. One of our ex-students works for a visual effects company in... Um, in London, and one of his first jobs was working on the King's Speech. So the King's Speech, you wouldn't think that, had lots of visual effects, and it had a huge amount. The crowd scenes, none of it was real. It's all visual effects. The fog in the, when, you're, when they're walking down the street, all of it was visual effects. So it's a huge area, and, that's, and this is one of the key reasons that students come to do this type of degree. There's also programming. You cannot do this sort of stuff. You don't understand programming and scripting and making things interactive. Sound is obviously a key part, so you're not only dealing with the sound for application production, but the sound in terms of sound editing for your video. Uh, web development. Web's going to be the end platform for a lot of the video that you produce, uh, increasingly more and more, and also professional issues. Okay, so that hopefully gives you an idea of those two degrees. They're fairly different in, the, in their sort of core uh, competencies. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk about the final year projects. So we've seen several final year projects so far. Uh, the game final year project uh, that you saw earlier with the suit um, was one, but here's a, an example um, <coughs> of a uh, visual effects project so for a computing project for for digital media student. Somewhere on the University of Sussex campus. And to complete this shot, I'd have to use a combination of 3D modeling, tracking, and 2D compositing. So to begin with, we went to the location and we recorded what become the backplate of the scene. Uh, this then needed some image manipulation, such as color correction. This sort of took out the, all the highlights and sort of made the scene look a bit grungy, like it was a sort of a stormy day. I modeled a helicopter using Maya, and then this was rendered out using multiple passes, such as a diffuse, specular, and shadow passes. Uh, this all then also needs to be color corrected within the scene. Another part of my project was to have a human, a real person, jump out of the helicopter. And obviously, we couldn't do this any other way than using blue screen. So the actor was recorded jumping off a table in front of a blue screen, and this was later composited into the shot to make him look like he was appearing from the helicopter. Uh, there were loads of leaves on the floor on the day of filming, and these weren't wanted within the scene. So uh, to get rid of these, a new floor was created, and it was just laid over the top. Uh, this was then color corrected to make it match the scene. Um, but then leaves were needed for the shot, because obviously if there were leaves, they, they would be blowing around as the helicopter came down. So to do this, uh, on the day of the shoot, um, a bloke was fi uh, filmed running around with a leaf blower, just blowing leaves. These leaves were then cut out using alpha mapping and just sort of laid over the top of the scene to create a sort of another layer of uh, realism. The final shot needed all the markers used for tracking removed. The 3D model of the helicopter also had to be tracked and animated within Maya. And then the final uh, stage of the shot was to add sort of just a particle pass. I really enjoyed doing this part of my degree. It's definitely the part that sort of forced me to learn the most out of my entire sort of time at Sussex. And I enjoyed it so much that I'm actually going to the Vancouver Film School this coming year to study uh, 3D animation and video effects and hopefully uh, pursuing a career in video effects and 3D in the future. And Will did in fact go off to uh, Vancouver and graduated and is now another one of our students who works in a visual effects house in London. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of the two, those two degrees and a bit of an idea about 
the components of them. Uh, if you want to know more about those degrees or the studio you're sitting in, uh, you can go to www.mtllive.com. Um, but I'm going to uh, give you a bit more of an idea of this facility by giving you a virtual tour, which involves you sitting here and watching the screen. But before we go anywhere, um, I'm just going to talk a bit about this room that you're sitting in at the moment. So this is Studio One. This is our main studio. As you can see, there's half a dozen cameras around the edge, including a boom camera over there. Uh, we've got specialist lighting in the ceiling here, which we can not only control the, uh, the intensity of, but the color of it, because a lot of it's LED based. And we're using a lot of different microphones and things. So we've got a highly configurable uh, space. So what we can do is, for instance, if you had a band, we could bring them in here. We could mic them up. We could not only film them, but we can record them. We can take the signals optically from here through the gallery to the sound room, and we could put them onto CD. And additionally to that, uh, all students get to use this facility in the first year as part of their professional issues. So you'll do a presentation in front of the camera. And this is fantastic because then you'll be able to watch it back on the internet and it gives you a really good idea of where you're, what, where you're doing things well and where you can improve things in terms of your presentation skills. So doing things in the front of the camera is something that everybody will do on all of your degrees. But um, now we'll do a bit of a virtual tour. So you stay here watching the screen and I can take Matt on camera four and show you the rest of the facilities. Okay, so I just pick up Matt here and I pop into the gallery. So the gallery is the nerve center of today's presentation that's being given to you. Okay, so you can see there's a bank of monitors here coming in, showing all the signals coming from the different cameras and other things we've got uh, queued up to play. Um, so this is highly technical and one of the things we actually do as well as show you how to use this is we actually write the software. So here's a bit of software down here, a bit of image processing software that we've written, okay, written by some of our undergraduates which does the warping for the screen you're watching at the moment. And there's a lots of this technical material that we produce ourselves. Um, so in addition to that we're actually we're broadcasting this to you sitting next door and also to uh, another lecture theatre but we're also putting it out on the web uh, so we can actually see uh, this is the live coverage on the web and what you'll notice is it's uh, about 30 seconds behind the live presentation and that's because we have to encode it here, send it to our server, then it gets uploaded to YouTube and then gets down to the mobile phone so it takes quite a while to do that but it is a live presentation that we can put out. So I said they've got full control in here, okay, so they can, show, they can cut between different cameras, but they can also uh, queue up and play videos like this. Again, nice video from the start of one of our lectures there. Okay, so this is uh, Gallery 1 and Studio 1. Let's go and have a look at Studio 2. So if I come out and come at the corridor, we've got two studios, which means we can do bigger presentations like we're doing today. And we can also do uh, lots of things in parallel with the students. So if I come in here, this is uh, Gallery 2. Uh, it's very similar to Gallery, uh, Gallery 1. It's got a bank of monitors behind me showing the signals from the camera. I don't know if Matt can actually get this screen here. This is another bit of software that we wrote that enables us to connect everything up and get the right signals going to the right places. Okay, so there's a lot of computer science here for undergraduate students. So we come into here. Uh, we've got Studio 2 set up for a little demonstration. So if I come in here and I stand over here, uh, you can see that I've got a green screen behind me um, and because I'm not wearing any green, we can remove the green in real time and replace it with, hey presto, the weather. It had to be the weather really, didn't it? Um, but obviously it can be many things. We can do some really complex things with this and I've got, even got a clicky button, okay, that I can click and say, look, uh, here's a satellite picture and it's a bit, bit wet up north, uh, but it's sunny down in Brighton. And in fact, the sun always shines in Brighton. It's just sometimes the clouds get in the way. So Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of the facilities we have here and the degrees that these facilities support, particularly the Computing for Digital Media uh, facility, which where you will be, uh, students on that degree will be using these facilities a lot. Okay, so uh, earlier this uh, week we had our final year project uh, day where students did uh, show off their final year projects and we're going to play you out with a clip of a video of the ongoings there. 